keep asking me that every 10 minutes? It's exactly nine minutes since the last time I told you. Seems like 90. Oh, you birds all act that way the day you're getting out. Like an old horse heading for home. They're coming for you now. Goodbye. Come back again when you get more time. Have a tall phony one on me, Pally. Johnny doesn't live here anymore. I found wise guy. So long, Bradley. Be careful of the traffic, kid. Here's your wallet, Bradley. And here's the customary money the state gives each outgoing prisoner. Thanks, Warden. You can keep that and give it to some guy who needs it more than I do. Thank you, I will. And put this with it, please. For the welfare fund? If that's where it'll do the most good. I can't say that I'm sorry to see you go, Bradley. Neither can I, Warden. Your record here has been good. I hope it'll be the same way on the outside. If they'll let me alone, it will. You're not altogether free. You've got to watch your step. It's hard on a man who's been a loser, even a one-time loser. I've had enough bars being watched every minute of the day and night. Oh, I know how you feel. I'd have to admit you've got a tough break. You never belonged here. But I don't make the laws. I wish you did. The man you hit in that brawl died. And the law says you've got to pay for that crime. I paid, all right. Watch your temper, Bradley. Watch it. I've seen you hold on to it when things were tough. What are you going to do now? I'm going back to Denton. I got a little cabin there. It's out in a grove of tall trees. And the air is good. I won't have to breathe it in through bars. Friends? I'll find out if I've got any friends left soon enough. Don't let it beat you if you find out you haven't. Stay clear of fights and watch that temper. I'll watch it. Well, so long, old man, and good luck. Goodbye, warden. Bachelor Hall. What is it, Father? John Bradley's turned country gentleman on us. I wouldn't be so hard on him, Father. He's behaving himself. Yes, he better behave himself. As long as I'm peace officer of this county, he'll find himself back in Bachelor Hall where he belongs. John's always been a good boy, just a little independent. You seem to forget he's an ex-convict. You always seem to think well of his father. Oh, you're talking about a man. Bob Bradley, one of the finest men who ever lived. Came to have a son like that one. <laughs> For the life of me, I can't figure it out. It's a time like this when a man needs all his friends. Speaking of his friends, uh, where's Helen? At the Bensons. She's had dinner there. Oh, yes. Nice folks, the Bensons. I'm glad that daughter of ours is getting some sense. <laughs> Why, of course. It's high time she forgot that jailbird. If I catch her hanging around John Bradley, I'll... Now, Fred, she's forgotten all about that. Helen promised me she'd never see Bradley again. Helen, you're getting to be a pest. I don't like the idea of your coming here. Well, I like it. 
and I'm going to keep coming here. This place needs a woman's touch. Next time, I'm going to put some new drapes up over those windows. Well, right now, you're going to put on your coat and go home. Oh, let me stay and talk with you for a while. You used to let me have my own way. Yeah, just what got me into the mess. I've told you how sorry I am. After all, I didn't know a little flirting was going to end in a fight. But it did. The fight ended in a boy's death. It put me behind bars for three long years. You don't seem to realize what that meant. And Myra Benson and her mother tried every trick they knew to make George propose. But he just wouldn't. <laughs> Smart fella. Oh, but he'll come around. Helen, someday you're going to become one of the best back fence dirt dishers in the county. But don't start practicing on me. Now your time's up. Come on. Oh, but I haven't told you the hottest piece of news yet. Hot or cold, you're going right now. Remember that woman I was telling you about? Well, Tony Robeson certainly went a step too far when he brought her right into his house. Honestly, it was the most shameless yeah. thing he could have done. And what do you think happened next? The next thing is that you're going home right now. Well, I haven't finished yet. That's what you think. Come on, now, your five minutes was up ten minutes ago. First thing I know, you'll be here for breakfast. Oh, all right. Cut it out. Aren't you even going to kiss me goodbye? Don't be silly. Why not? I'm not a kid anymore. That's just it. You're a woman now. Show some sense. Well, if I were a man who hadn't seen a girl for three years, and she was crazy about him, and wanted to kiss him... That's probably your father. Get in the kitchen, quick. Come in. I said, come in. It's all right. I was, I was trying to get to the railroad station when I slipped and fell. You see, I, I've got to get away. You traveling in those clothes? I left in a hurry. I had to. Oh. Hey, Helen. This is Helen, Miss, uh, I didn't quite get your name. Louise Loring. How do you do? Hurt yourself? Mm-hmm. Better sit down. I'm just leaving. I'll be glad to drop you at the station. It's on my way home. Oh, thank you. No need to hurry. There isn't a train until 6. In the morning? 6 a.m. It's a long time to stand up. You better sit down. Can we do something about the leg? What will I do? I don't know. Tie it up or something. Oh, don't bother. It's nothing to fuss over. Let me look at it. Oh, got a bad cut on your knee. Mm -hmm. Your ankle is swelling. You sit still. I'll get something to fix it. Thank you. I'm sorry to put you to all this trouble. That's woman's middle name. What is? Trouble. Is that how you feel about women? Exactly. Oh, that's grand. Thank you. 
Did I understand you to say there wasn't a train until morning? That's right. Oh, dear, that does make it awkward. All right, come in. Hello, Robson. Hello, Conroy. I see you didn't get very far, dear. Uh oh, you hurt yourself. How? I fell. There, you see. If you hadn't been in such a hurry, this wouldn't have happened. Somebody did a neat job. I suppose you were the doctor, Bradley. No. No, he didn't do it. I did. Oh, hello, Miss Grant. Hello. Hey, what do you fellows want here? Oh, nothing to be upset about. I've just come to take my... my house guest home. I'm not coming back. You're not serious. But I am. I'm leaving as soon as I can get a train out of here. All right, dear, but uh, surely you don't intend to go in those clothes. Just as I am. And what do you propose to do until morning? I might sit right here if Mr. Bradley would allow it. It's okay with me. Thank you. Your mind's made up? Yes, quite. Well, you usually know what you want. Come on, Conroy. Need some money? No, thanks, Dick. Conroy, come on. Good luck, Louise. Thank you. I hope the lady doesn't prove too much trouble. She's very good company. When she wants to be. I'd lock that door if I were you. I don't like locked doors. Nice, friendly little visit. They've been drinking. Sounds like a good idea. Want to get them, Helen? All right. I'm sorry about all this. It's your business, not mine. Yes, but it was embarrassing. And I'd like to explain. Save it. You don't have to apologize. But I do owe you an explanation. You see, Robeson... Robeson's no stranger to me. Not by reputation, anyway. How well do you know him? Well enough to guess the rest of the story. It was partly my fault, but then... You see, I was in a... In a tough spot. I know. I just got out of one myself. I hope yours was easier to get out of than mine. Maybe not easier, but it took longer. You wanted drinks? Oh, thanks, Helen. Yeah. Never mind, I'll take it. Where? With that? Yep. What? All right, just thought you ought to know, Sheriff. Not that it's any concern of mine. You bet I ought to know. I'll fix her and him, too. What is it, Bob? What is it? Fine kind of a mother you are. Don't even know where your own daughter is. She's at the Benson's, is she? Well, she isn't. She's at Bradley's. That's where she is. Where are you going, Father? Where do you suppose I'm going? Uh, 
Well, that'll give Bradley something of his own to worry about instead of my affairs. That's a rather dirty trick. It's a little late for you to be getting noble, isn't it? I, I wouldn't have gotten it, Bradley, that way. Oh, you wouldn't. Well, that's my way, and when I want to know yours, I'll ask it. Until then, keep your mouth shut. I've kept quiet about a lot of things so far, but only because I had to. Someday, I hope... To... Someday, you hope what? You only work for me because you're a weakling. Don't try to be anything you're not. I wouldn't like it. Yes? All right. Goodbye. That was Mother. Robeson just telephoned home. Said I was here. Dad's on his way out now. I've got to get out of here quick. Hold on a minute. You can't go out there. You'd meet your dad on the road. Yes, but I can't stay here. Now, listen. I'll put your car out back. You stay here. The minute you hear your father knocking, you beat it out to the kitchen door. You'll probably get home before he gets through squawking. Oh, dear. I hope you won't get into any trouble. I hope he won't. You're very fond of him, aren't you? Yes, but what good does it do me? He thinks I'm just a kid. I'm awfully sorry. I'm afraid to have Dad come here. Whatever happens, don't let John fight. Well, I won't if I can help him. You see, I got him into trouble once before and... Everything's okay. Now you go on out into the kitchen in case your dad drops in unexpectedly. All right. Goodbye, Miss Laura. Goodbye, dear. Get home safely. Helen. Hello, Mr. Grant. Where is she? Helen's not here. Oh, sorry, Sheriff. You don't know Miss... I know her. I know all about her. Most everyone does. He's telling the truth, Mr. Grant. Helen isn't here. Yes, a convict's word backed up by, a, by yours. No one would believe with a pair like you say. I'd be careful of what I said if I were you, Sheriff. What are you doing? Threatening me? No, warning you. Look, you're not going to fight. I don't want to, but... but... you're not to fight. No, you're right. It's the last thing I want to do. It'll land me right back where I came from. Well, just remember that. I will. For the last time, I'm telling you to stay away from my daughter. Next time, I won't talk. The old fox senses she's been here. He's pretty smart. Do the people around here think about me like he does? I haven't any idea. I haven't been around here in some time. I'm practically a stranger here myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, I guess I'd better go out and see if the kid got away all right. Oh, I hope she did. You were quick, I didn't... Ex what do you want? Bradley in there? What do you want? Well, darling, it's like this. You're coming home with me. I gave you my answer when you were here before. Still... You're coming home. Oh, it's no use, Tony. It won't work. I'll never go back with you. Better come along, Louise, before there's any trouble. If I have to carry you, you're... You leave me alone. Well, don't stand there. Get rid of that dog. Oh, thank you. Oh, 
don't know you don't. What is this, open house or visitor's day? We won't intrude any longer. Miss Loring's decided to come home with us. That's all right with me. But I'm not going. That's all right with me, too. Who did this? Again, baby, and I'll break your arm. Uh, he's all right. Take him and get out of here. Come on, Dick, wake up. We're going home. I'm all right. Come on. Get him out of here. The air will bring him to. Conroy will be a sorry boy when he sobers up and realizes what he's done. I should think he might. Robeson made him do it. He handles him like a child. Cigarette? Thank you. Believe it or not, this place used to be known as one of the quietest in the county. Probably would have remained so if I hadn't come along. Oh, you brightened things up a bit. It was beginning to get pretty monotonous. Mm -hmm. Gonna be a long wait for that train. Oh, I don't mind. Getting away is too important. And out you get away? Well. First thing will be to get some clothes. Clothes? Doesn't a woman ever think past getting some clothes? Very seldom. May I turn on the radio? Help yourself. You don't look like the type of person who get mixed up with a man like Robeson. Men like Robeson know women rather well. You might call it their business. They wait for a time when a woman needs friendship and sympathy. And then they're very kind and gentle. I've never discovered anything kind or gentle about Robeson. You're not a woman. Well, when I first knew him... Welcome home, stranger. When'd you get in? Only an hour ago. I've still got my sea legs. <laughs> Why didn't you cable me? Oh, too thrilled, too excited, I guess. I've got a head just spinning with plans. Well, sit down or you'll have mine spinning too. What are they? Well, wonderful things. Am I in them? Oh, no. Oh, come now, Louise. Surely you've forgiven me that, that clumsy attempt in Paris. Of course I have. Would I be here if I hadn't? <laughs> I guess not. How's the music? Simply trembling to burst out of me. I'll have you know I'm the finished product of the finest conservatory in Europe. All set to knock the American public cold, huh? All set. What's the approach? Well, I'm going on a concert tour. Ready for it? I mean, you must realize that it takes something more than just enthusiasm. Yes, I know that. I, I may have to teach first. Interest people. It's done, you know. You have interested one people. Me. Oh, thank you, Tony. I'm glad you believe in me. It's more than just a belief, Louise. You have the talent, all you need is the money. I can supply that. 
Oh, but Tony, I have some pride, you know. Oh, pride's nothing to do with it. It'll be a loan. You'll need money if you're going to succeed. Money, influential friends, many things. I have all that. The idea sounded great at the time. <laughs> a shortcut to fame, eh? Yes, only in my case it wasn't fame. When my season finished in Boston, I went up to see him again. I've come to tell you that... I know all about it. I've been watching the papers. The concert in Boston was what we'd call an artistic success. Not a box office yet. I'm glad you understand. More than you think, dear. Well, that makes it easier to tell you. What? I've been a bad risk. All this money, I, I didn't know it was so much until now. Forget the money. I can't. It was a loan. It was an investment. Well, why didn't you tell me that? I never would have accepted it. I wanted you to have it if you couldn't sing a note. There are so many things I want to give you. Oh, but... It's yours. Forget your career for a while. We'll go away somewhere. Well, don't fight me off again, Louise. There's so much I want to do for you. I've waited such a long time. Well, that's the whole story. Very interesting. Hmm, pretty. If you don't want to play, you don't. No, I don't want to play. Bradley, eh? Just what I expected. Fighting again. All right, I'll be right over to swear out a warrant. All right, all right. What happened, Pa? Bradley's got himself in another mess. Fighting over that woman I saw up there. I wish he'd do his fighting in the daytime. Getting me up in the middle of the night. Westport, 7460. Yes. I should think you'd understand. I've just been telling you about Robeson and... The Meyer Robeson type? Yes. Worse. I'll admit I'm not very gentle. I wish you'd believe me. Does it make any difference? Excuse me. Hello? Oh, hello, kid. I'm glad you got home all right. What's on your mind? Speak louder. I don't dare talk any louder. Listen. What? Sure, I'll leave here right away. I'll be at Logan's, Tommy Logan's in the city. Try and get word to me there tomorrow. His address is... All right, I'll call you tomorrow. Now be careful, kid. Don't ask for me or mention my name over the phone. All right. Thanks a lot, honey. Goodbye. Conroy's got a fractured skull. When he fell, he hit his head. Robeson sworn out a warrant for my arrest. Oh. That means they're going to drag me back again. Back? What do you mean? I'm out on parole. I was up once before for the same thing. They call it manslaughter. This time, if Conroy dies, they'll make it murder. But I could explain how it happened. I'm afraid your word wouldn't help. Oh, I see. If he dies, I haven't a chance. I've got to get out of here. I'll drop you at the station. All right. The cops may give us a chase. You afraid? No. Why don't I get your coat? Yes. Come on, let's go. Right. Frightened? No. Are you cold? Not very.
thing. Well, the police call is probably out by now, but if we can cross the county line before morning, we still have a chance. There they are. Steady. Drive slower. Well, it looks like it's up. Well, well, what are we here? You seem to be in a great hurry. Not particularly. I didn't realize you were going so fast. You didn't, eh? Well, you'd better slow up. There's a bridge out three miles ahead. You'll have to detour. Take it easy. Thanks, I will. How's your heart? Pretty badly shaken up. Well, you're all right, you know. They don't want you. I wasn't thinking of that. We better pull off this main road and lay low in the morning. When the police call goes out, that cop will report where he saw us, and they'll probably think we're a great deal further on. Anyway, we could do with a few hours sleep. All right. We're only a few miles from the station. If we leave by daylight, we ought to be able to make it by train time. You can't take me to the station. It's too dangerous. Where else? Where are you going? To Tommy Logan's, a friend of mine. We shared the same cell. Take me with you. No, you better get out of all this. But I started it. That's not the point. I'd rather stay with you. Help if I can. I'll sell these if you need any money. Thanks, but I don't need any. But I can stay. All right. You better sleep in back. Why? Do I disturb you? Yeah. Come on. Well, but I'll get cold back there. No, you won't. Come on. Ankle hurt? Yes, a little. You all right? Yes, thank you. Good night. Good night. Are you asleep? No. As long as you're still awake, I might as well turn on the radio and see if the police are sending out any calls about us. Mm-hmm. Calling all home, calling all home. Before you go to bed tonight, make sure you sleep on the Flanagan suspension bed. <laughs> the Flanagan suspension bed is built on the same principle as the Brooklyn Bridge, but with just a little more sprinkling. If you've never slept on the Flanagan suspension bed, you've only been laying down. And now the Flanagan <laughs> Troop Corps will play their theme song. Sleep, beautiful sleep. <laughs> <laughs>
didn't know you was awake, Lil. No, you petty loss on a yegg. I'm sound asleep. I'm just having a dream that you hoisted my watch. No, honest, Lil. You see, I just wanted to see what time it was. Ain't you cute. Just wanted to know what time it is. You know that biscuit hasn't been running for three years. Well, that's it. You see, I was just fixing to take it down and have it fixed. It's run down. Yeah, and you think it needs a rest in the hock shop. Oh, now, don't get all head up, Lil. You, remember, I gave you this watch. Yes, I know you did, you Indian giver. Give me that ticker. Oh, now, Lil. Oh, now, Lil. Oh. I said, no, give Lil. me that watch. Lil, cut it out now. You know I got a weak liver. Come here, oh, you Lil. Oh, Lil, wait I'll a minute I'll teach now. you to oh, rob your no. own Oh, Lil, wife. please don't. Oh, oh don't, don't, don't hit me with that. You know, your mother gave you that. Oh, yeah, well, you're going to get it right back. Who is it? It's Bradley. Open up. Can I just see you, kids? You know, I was just talking to the missus about you the other day and wondered what had happened to you. You know that... Tommy Logan, Miss Laurie. Yes. Uh, how do you do, Miss? How do you do? Uh, uh, won't you sit down? Yes, thank you. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, 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 Lil. Lil. Tommy. Baby, this is John Bradley. I certainly feel as if I knew you. Tommy's always talking about you. I guess that goes two ways. <laughs> yeah, you know, he... Oh, and this is his girlfriend, Miss Miss uh, 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 Laurie. Laurie, yes. How do you do? <laughs> How do you do? So this is John Bradley. Maybe just like I told you. It looks all right to me. <laughs> Thanks. I guess I got you to thank that Tommy ever got out of the cooler. He wasn't a bad boy up there. No. If you hadn't watched him, you would have stolen everything, including the warden's back teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, doesn't she say the cutest thing, John? <laughs> you folks must be hungry. You're a mind reader, all right. I'll see what I can do about it. Uh, won't you uh, take off your coat, Miss Loring? Yes, thank you. Long distance. Hurry that call, will you please? 167 West Street. That's right. Logan. L-O-G-A-N. No, L, as in love. That's right. Oh. Hello, Dad. Long distance. This is Sheriff Grant speaking. There was a mistake in that address my daughter just gave you. Read it back, please. 167. Yes. 167 West Street. That's right. And the name? L-O-G-A-N. You better cancel that call. What's on your mind? Trouble? I slapped a guy down last night. Yeah, and when you slap him, they stay slapped. We're hoping he's not badly hurt. He'll get the best of attention in the Denton Hospital. Sure. Have a drink? No, thank you. Here's a bike. Maybe this will hold you until we can get some food together. Get on the phone, will you, and get someone to bury my cards down in front. Sure. We'll need some clothes, too. Got any cash? A little. Hey, there's plenty of cash. There's nothing phony about those things. I know a fella that... There's no rush. You don't have to fence that stuff. It's not hot. Oh. Get off to that car, will you? All right. I think I've got some clothes I could fix for you. Oh, thank you. I would like to get out of this dress. Won't take no time at all. Don't give that jewelry to Logan. Why not? I'll need the money. I've got plenty for now. He'd jip you. But he's your friend. Trust him. When it comes to jewelry, that's where he flops. In the first place, he'd sell it to a fence. You wouldn't get a third of what they're worth. With Tom whistling in, you'd better hang onto them. Just as you say. Would you like to clean up, honey? I'd like a bath. <laughs> sure, here's a rope for you. Well, it's pretty. Yeah, Tommy fell in love with me in that rope. I mean... Uh... <laughs> That's all right. We understand. Am I embarrassed? <laughs> well, it's not much, but it holds water. Well, that's all that's necessary. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That. A ride standing outside of my joint. That's it. That's the idea. And you'd better change the license plates, too. Right away. Make it snappy, you know. Okay. Good. 
Say, what about Krauss? Hadn't we better get him over? He's a bad egg. But he's a shark lawyer, and you're in a spot. All right, all right. How is he, Doctor? Looks very serious. Hello. Yes, just a moment. Mr. Robeson, it's for you. Thanks. Hello? Oh, hello, Sheriff. Good, I hope they get him. Yeah, when I see this poor kid lying here, I... Fine. They've got a line on Bradley. Expect to arrest him any minute. Good. Well, don't you know I'm in here? Sure. Well, I've got to dress. Why'd you dress in the bathroom? Have you seen the bathroom? Oh, dress here. I won't peek. Well, uh, whose room is this supposed to be? Yours or mine? I think it's the Logan's idea that it ought to belong to both of us. Oh. Well. Perfectly all right. I won't bother you. I wasn't afraid you would. How's your ankle? Oh, Becky, I've, I've taken the bandage off. Good. Well, here's hoping you've got willpower. You want me to have willpower? I like you better the way you were in the car last night. I'm getting to be a softy. Maybe I'll even end up by being kind and gentle. You still don't believe me, do you? About Robeson, I mean. Does it matter? Yes. Say, don't carry this modesty business too far. You know, I can't see a darn thing out this window but a brick wall. Well, <laughs> you can look now. Thanks. There's a fire escape below. Go on, beat it, will you? Lil and I'll take care of her. Sure. Hey, you got the dough? Yeah, I'll be seeing you. Hey, come on, you dames, or you'll tip his mitt. Better open up or they'll be making toothpicks out of the landlord's best door. Who? Quit stalling and make it snappy, will you? I ain't had breakfast yet. Come on, tell me where he's gone. Oh, if I knew, I would tell you, you big snail. Go on, back me again. How about it, Blake? I plugged him and Ryan's after him. Lay off, Ed. It's okay. Come on, I want you back in Denton. What for? I don't know, something about some jewelry that belonged to some guy's mother and you copped it when you left. That's not true. Yeah? 
That's the junk there, isn't it? You better give it to me. Those are mine. They were bought for me. Come on, hand it over. But I'm trying to tell you. Tell that... it to the judge. Say, you. Lay off her. She ain't done nothing. Shut up. Come on, will you? I'm getting hungrier by the minute. I can't thank you enough for all you've done for me. Now remember, no matter what happens, don't talk until you've seen Kraut. He's Tommy's lawyer. Do you think he'll take my case? Sure. We'll send him right over. Will you come on before I pass out? Come on, Ed. Well, there goes the jury. I told you so. I had a hunch. Oh, now, you see? shut up. Say, what the... Here's that dame they want at Denton, Sarge. Here's the stuff. Not bad. Uh, I mean, uh, nice stuff. Did you get the guy? Uh, he stopped a slug. I guess he's in the hospital. Oh, how is he? Can't someone tell me how he is? Your guess is as good as mine, sister. Come on. Oh, Luke. Put her in the royal suit, and if she don't like that, take her to the Ritz. All right, Sergeant. Come on, man. You know, Sarge, I gotta go on a diet. You should. You come here. Quit asking the same question. Here you are, boy. We're taking you back to debt. Not until I've seen my lawyer. Come on, don't give us no trouble. We won't give you none. Get your hat. Look, if you'll only tell me how John, John Bradley is, I'll go like a lamb. You go like a lamb anyway. But please. Say, listen, we ain't bothering you with a lot of questions, so don't you bother us. Here. Come on. I'll get your bail all fixed, and I'll have you out of here as soon as I've asked you a few questions. But I gotta tell you the answers first. It certainly is a relief to have you here, Mr. Krause. It was more than good of you to come. Oh, that's all right. Anything I can do for a friend of Bradley's. You've got money, haven't you? Nothing but my jewels. And you haven't got that now. Well, Bradley's good for it. Good for what? The bail, my fees, everything. Let's hear all about it. Shoot the works. What do you want to know? Everything. Truth. No song and dance. Begin at the beginning. Well... We had an understanding, Robeson and I. It was pretty low of him to say I stole those things. He must have been angry because I left him. That's easy to understand. Ouch! Hey, what's the matter with you? If there's something you don't like, you can say so, can't you? I did. I went to Robeson's house because... If it wasn't for Bradley, you could take your troubles to another lawyer. Well, go on, let's hear it. Nobody knows I'm here today, Doc. Why, no, of course not. Just stay quiet there for a while. We can 
take him now, Cantwell, Doc. Is it through with him? He's pretty weak. He's lost a lot of blood. Better let him stay here for 24 hours. Okay, we can arrange that. Forget about Conroy being a nice fellow except when he's drunk. Just emphasize that he killed the dog when the dog was trying to protect you. Get me? Yes. Well, let's go. And don't forget any of the answers. I won't. Oh, to think that I'll be able to get out of here tonight and go back to town. We might not be able to go back tonight. We could stay at the inn and go back in the morning. Come on. Can't we do something? Can't we at least find out if John needs help? Everything in time. No hurry. That's me. Hello. Hello. Have you seen John? Sure. Is he all right? Certainly. The doc says it ain't serious. He'll get well. Oh, I'm so glad. That dirty sawbones tipped off the cops and they're covering the joint. Well, then I've got to go to him right away. Let's go back oh, to wait town. a minute. You can't do that. You're not in the clear yet. You're merely out on bail. If you go to Bradley now, you'll both be implicated. The smart move is to stay here tonight. He's right. Hey, where's the rocks? Rocks? The stones, the jewelry. Oh. The police are holding you. Uh-huh. See there? I told you to give them to me. I knew they'd fall in the wrong hands. <laughs> you two wait here a minute. I'll go and arrange for the room. Hey. Room. Okay. Is he being taken good care of? I I'll tell you later. I just thought of something, too, if you'll excuse me. Say, Mr. Smith, uh, would you mind making that Mr. Brown just for my sake? Wise guy, eh? Well, the house is full of Smiths. I can't keep my book straight. Is 405 and 406 close enough? All right. Okay. Hey, what's the idea of a joining room? Bradley, I'll kick your head off. Keep your nose out of this. I know what I'm doing. Oh, yeah? Does Bradley know? do. Knowing the way I feel about you. I might even get a kick out of that, always. If you come back to me, we'll drop this case against you. I'll say I was drinking when I swore out the warrant and, and that the bracelet and ring are really yours. And if I don't? Well, that's your worry. I did come back here. Just suppose. What about Bradley? Why are you so interested in Bradley? You only met him last night. Well, that's not the point. He didn't mean to hurt Conroy so badly. Perhaps not. But Conroy's dying and Bradley's responsible. You could help him if you wanted to. What can I do? He's already served one term for manslaughter. But why all this concern about Bradley? You're in rather a tough spot yourself. Hasn't your little taste of jail been enough? Why don't you get smart? I just can't see it your way, Tony. Well, think it over. Oh, Louise, they told me. 
told me that I'd find you here. Yes, Helen. I can only stay a moment. I thought you ought to know. Father says that John Bradley isn't seriously hurt. He's going to get well. Yes, I know, but he's under arrest and he'll face a murder charge if Conroy dies. Yes, but if I hadn't have phoned the Logans, the police wouldn't have found him. Tell me, how badly is Dick Conroy hurt? Is he really dying? Yes, but Father says that Robeson's doing everything he can for him. Day nurse, night nurse. What do you mean Robeson's doing? Isn't Dick in the hospital? No, it was too dangerous to move him, so Robeson kept him at his house. Oh, I see. Well, I've got to go now. Goodbye, Louise. Goodbye, Helen. It was very sweet of you to come. Who's the dame? Well, a friend of mine, the sheriff's daughter. Well, what do you have to say? Nothing important. Well, I guess you're pretty tired. Would you like to turn in? I'm going back to Robeson. What? What did you say? Why, that dirty, double-crossing little... Clerk. Yes, sir. Cancel those rooms. Oh, sorry you couldn't stay longer, Mr. Smith. Uh, Brown? <laughs> All right, will you tell me what really happened? How many times have I got to tell you? The Bulls took her back to Denton on a jewelry rack. Well, what did you do? Didn't you get Krauss? Sure, sure. Everything's been taken care of. Will you relax? Just a minute, just a minute. Where do you think you're going? In there. Nobody's allowed in there. Well, but my wife's in there with my best friend. That's too bad, but those things sometimes happen. Now, I knew of a case once where a fellow is... Oh, I, I know, I know, but you see, I've got to get in you there. You can't, it's rule. What kind of a deal is this? Ain't there one rule for rich or poor, husband and wives? All right, I'll give you five minutes. Thanks. Johnny, I've got this thing all figured out. It's a cinch to break out of here. Listen, there's a rain pipe leading from that window right down to the street. Tell me what happened to her, will you, Tommy? All right, all right. I was on a pleasure trip, see, and he said, was your wife with you? And I said, no, it was a pleasure trip. <laughs> I've... Cut it, will you? Tell me what happened to her. She's okay, I tell you. Now, you just take it easy and... Quit you're... stalling, where is she? I wouldn't worry about her. You know how dames are. When things get tough, they can't take it. What do you mean? Well, as soon as Krauss from her, Robeson showed up and she went back with him. Forget her, Johnny. She ain't worth a headache. Cut it out, Lil. Cut it out. Tell me get the car around. We'll stop and get some clothes. Are you nuts? You'll never make it. I know a man who shaves 40 times a day. He said, who? And I said, a barber. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, listen, pal, we've got plenty of time for this. No, I'm going tonight. All right. Lil, you talk to that cop outside and keep him busy. Come on, Lil. I was just trying to cheer the patient up. Not for those guys. Oh, boy, what a sense of humor you've got. <laughs> well, big boy, you still hungry? Hungry, I could go for a barbecued suitcase, handles and all. Well, you're going to take me up on it, are you? No, but you can have what's in it. You know, one thing I like about bananas is they've got no bones in them. It's just too bad you have to throw the skins away. Huh? <laughs> Only the fruit, huh? You know, I knew a guy once who died from eating too much fruit. He was a vegetarian. That made his wife a grass widow. <laughs> Boy, are you funny. Johnny, you're an awful sap to do this. You're only putting yourself in a spot. Cut it, Tommy. Let's get going.
Where are you going, dear? Well, uh, I felt rather tired. I thought I might retire. Oh, it's early yet. Come on down. You don't look very well. Headache still bothering you? Yes. Y yes, it is. Well, let me give you some brandy. Hmm? Yeah, maybe this will pick you up. It may. You know, Louise, I've been worrying about you. I mean, I've been trying to cheer you up, and you seem to want to avoid me. You seem so morbid. Oh, it's not that, Tony. I just feel a bit depressed. Was well, that the way I affect you? No, of course not. But I keep thinking about poor Dick upstairs. Isn't there any chance for him at all? The doctor doesn't seem to think so. Hasn't he come to at all? Not for a moment. That's what makes the case so hopeless. But supposing he does, I mean, even for a little while. Don't you think the police ought to be here to get a statement from him? What good would a statement do? It would clear Bradley. I'm sure Dick would realize that Bradley didn't mean to hurt him. There you go, thinking about Bradley again. Oh, it's not that, but I'd feel the same about anybody who was mixed up in a mess like So that. would I, anybody else but Bradley. Mr. Ralston, come quickly. He's regained consciousness. Well, get the doctor. No, no, you stay here. But please, can I? I said stay here. I mean, the slightest excitement might prove fatal. John! What are you doing here? I thought you were in the hospital. They told me you they were. They told me you were here. I had to see for myself. But you don't understand. I understand well enough. And if I didn't, that would explain anything I wanted to know. John, you don't think I came back here because of Robeson? No, of course not. Please, you must let me explain. Oh, no. I listened to your stories once before and was sap enough to believe in you. I had you pegged right the moment I met you. You're nothing but a cheap little... Stop it. If you'd only listen to me. <laughs> You stay out of this, Jan. You're only getting yourself into a worse jam. You've got it over your chest. Now, come on, let's get out of here before the cops catch up with us. It's a sense they're telling us. John, scram, the bulls are here. All right, Bradley. Back to the hospital. But this time, you're going to have a room with bars on the window. Have it your own way. Wait, there's something you don't know. Now, you keep out of this, lady. He's trying to say something. You've got to listen. Can I tell you what happened? What is it, son? Don't let him hit me again. Please. Don't let him hit me again. What do you mean? Robeson. Robeson? He won't hit you again. He hit me. Robeson did? Yes. When? Just after we left the cabin. After you left my cabin? Yes. Why did he do that? We argued. I threatened to talk about our business. Some deals we had made. He was through with me. I was afraid I knew too much. Don't let him. Come near me. You'll be all right, son. Hey, that's that's not bad with one hand. I bet you're pretty good with two. Yeah. Throw some water or something on that guy so we don't have to carry him down to the station. Okay. 
Now do you understand why I came back here? Don't rub it in. The minute I heard Conroy was in this house, I felt something was wrong. I understand, honey. Now wait. Hey, Logan. I'm here. You better come downstairs with me. I, I know, but 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 she's I did the garden and the garden and the garden. Come on. Applesauce. 